All right, guys, if you're just tuning in, uh, Bobo is going to do his part of the dollar store challenge. And just to let you know, Bobo, we got a bunch of 15 year old kids that saw the first one and they've been waiting for your, uh, your, uh, uh what, what do you call it? Your retort for quite some time. Okay. Well, this is, this is for them guys. So, uh, <laughs> You know, we have the, what is it, the five C's that you should have when you're going uh, bushcrafting, which is a cutting tool, a combustion device, a container, and uh, cover, and um, a cooking device. So that's what I put together. Okay, well, for all the people that uh, you know were were waiting for my uh, take on the uh, dollar store challenge, um, I went and we have tax here, so I went a little over the seven dollars. Yeah, by fifty-seven I, cents. I got a comment on that, Bobo. It, it sucks living in a state where you got to pay taxes on on everything for EU buy. Yeah, you know, it does suck, but at least we don't have to, when we go downtown, we don't have to dodge uh, landmines left by the uh, local homeless to go into the uh, <laughs> local Walmart. <laughs> you remember that story. Yeah, so, you know, when we when we go do bushcrafting, we do the, uh, the five C's, you know, and that's a uh, cutting tool, a combustion device a container, um, a uh, something to cook in, and cordage. So we have the five C's, and that's what I went after when I went uh, looking for this. So the first of the five C's is a cutting device, which is a little kitchen knife. You know, this has got a straight edge, so you could resharpen it. And it's just a good little uh, chopper. I went and I bought two of these just so I could test this one out without taking it out of the container. But uh, went and did that. They sharpen up real good. They hold a good edge. So there's the cutting device. Then uh, we have a combustion device, which is the same lighter that you got. You know, which you can't really beat that. You can get into a, a your uh, fire bundle and light it on fire and get everything going. So that's that's my combustion device. And then I saw I went and looked for a container. So they came across this. It's just a little container. It's BPA free. Um, it holds. I think it's. Two quarts of water or a quart of water. I can't remember what it is. But I figured that'd make a good little canteen. So there's the container for water. And then uh, cook stuff in. Cooking utensil. I went and I picked up a dog bowl. And I know, Tim, that it wouldn't be the first time you've eaten out of the dog bowl or been in the dog house. So <laughs> there you go. Which means you can put it in the fire and uh, boil water with it or cook a nice little uh, stew or whatever. And, you know, it's, it's durable. Then we have cordage. And then we have that little yeah, cordage. It's, it looks like it's made out of um, baling twine. So it's like baling twine just by one strand of it is tough. Let alone you got a three or four strand in here of twine. So that's a pretty good uh, rope. And wait a second, there's another C I didn't I I didn't uh, I forgot to mention, and that's cover. And both of us bought the same tarp. My tarp is out in the uh, in the Yukon being used. So that was that's that it's in my truck. So I don't have it right here with me, but 
Tim was talking about, you know, getting wet out in Oregon because rumor has it that it rains there a little bit. So uh, I went and I picked up this little box of large trash bags. And uh, they are 30 gallon bags. They are fairly heavy duty. Um, they're not super heavy duty, but you can make raincoats out of this. You can uh, put gear inside of it that you don't want to get wet. Uh, you can make a shelter out of them. So there's 101 uses for garbage bags. I usually go down and I get uh, the 55-gallon drum liners, the real super heavy-duty ones. I keep four of those in my backpack just in case. But for the dollar store challenge, I couldn't go without getting the trash bags. And that is my kit. Nice. Nice. Works, you, know, it, it, that, that you could do probably, oh, at least 85% of anything you need to do in bushcrafting with just that kit. Nice. Yeah, and if, and if you guys who are watching, if you see that uh, – uh, Bob and I have very similar, we, we have a lot of similar items we picked, but we also have some, a few different ones. And you might see something like that because of a few different things, uh, uh, contributing factors. Uh, in this case, uh, Bob and I live in drastically different climates. Uh, he's up high. He, he's in the high desert where he's got to worry about cold and, and then in the summertime, possibly, I have never been there, but I'm imagining there's a scarcity of water in, in some points of time. Uh, where, where with me, where I'm at, I have the ocean to take advantage of uh, as a primary resource. So, so I'm going to buy some items that will help me take advantage of, of, of the ocean as a resource, be it netting, building traps for catching different things. So, so don't be afraid to, uh, to, to cover the basics like Bob said, but make sure that you stay variable uh, for the climate that you live in. Yeah, the thing is, is the weather here is real changeable. I mean, you could have, like today, it was almost uh you know back up into the 90s and uh last night it uh was down almost into the 50s so you have this wide range from day to night on temperature so you'd think that you know being in the desert you're gonna be hot all the time well it can drop into the freezing conditions at night and then be in the hundreds in the in the day. So you got to take that into consideration. Everywhere you go here, you always take a jacket just so you have you're ready for ready for the hot or the cold. Yeah, yeah. it's interesting you say that because uh, I had just gotten back recently from the desert down in uh, it was it was Arizona go leaving las vegas going into arizona and parts of utah uh we covered the grand canyon and we went into zion and uh <laughs> one thing i noticed from that experience and, and and this is the important thing is is if you're if you're going to be going into a place you're not familiar with and you're going to be trying to okay now now here's the trick here's the trick and that i think makes the difference between a person who makes it and a person who doesn't is you have people who go into a new environment with the idea, I'm going to conquer these elements. I'm going to master these elements and make this mine. But if you have the mentality, like you're going to go in and become not a master, but a contributing partner and a, a member of that community. And what I mean by community is, is the wild animals, the plants you get to know you're, you're going to become and bind with that, that particular uh, uh, atmosphere and, uh, and that new infrastructure of that wilderness. Now you got a shot. 
because I went in there and I looked at it and I'm, I'm thinking, okay, this is very different than any desert I've ever been in. Cause the deserts up here are similar to the desert that you're in Bob, where, where you have limited plant growth because of the harsh winters. Uh, where down there, I noticed you have a, a larger variety of plant life, but you have a lot less water. Uh, and it was scary, man. Uh, it was scary to me because I'm like, when I go into those places, I'm like, okay, how am I going to survive here? How am I going to make it? I found one river <laughs> that would, that would uh, produce your water. And that sucks because now you can't leave that area until the season changes. Uh, so let, let's say I got stranded there in Zion Valley. Uh, I can't leave. I, I can't leave that valley until summer is over and fall comes and it rains a little bit. Uh, will give me the freedom to leave that area. Well, yeah, yeah that's where your research comes in. Um, whenever I go into another environment, I usually do some sort of research edible plants, uh, where to find water. You know, you think you look at a desert and you go, there's nothing to drink here. Well, you go in to find where there's a, a, creek, a dry creek bed and you look for undercuts in a dry creek bed and you can dig down in those undercuts and you can actually find water. Or you look at the rock formations where you have two rock formations come together in a creek bottom you dig down you're gonna find water sitting there in the sand so you just got to understand what kind of environment you're going into and look up how to find water in that environment water is number one in the desert yeah. um you know you can go, there's the rule of threes again where you can you can survive three minutes without air uh, three hours um, in uh, without water. No, three. Oh, let's see, three hours, uh, three minutes without air. Um, three hours in a super harsh environment. Three days without water, and then uh, three weeks without food. So food is your least sought after item. And that's generally what the pe people go looking for first. You know, in that environment, water is number one. Yeah. You need, you know, and that, and that's the point. water and air. Those are the biggies. Yeah. Yeah. So the point being, guys, is, is uh, uh, th this is a really cool challenge because it, it got to show you uh, that we're basically on the same page. We had a, a, a couple of the same priorities. The only difference is, is, is our different climates and different, uh, different opportunities to take advantage of certain things. Uh, I, I prefer the climate I'm in. The climate I'm in is gonna be easy. Uh, having the ocean right next to me makes, makes survival a piece of cake having that there. Well, you know, we have lakes here. We uh, you know, up in the high country. See, we live in the high country where it's a little different than the actual desert where, you know, you go up in ele elevation when it's hot, you can find food, you can find game, you can find everything. During the winter time, we usually have plenty of rabbits that are running around. We have <laughs> I have out my back door during the uh, here in the next couple of months. I'll I'll have herds of elk out there, you know, wow. and uh, you know, and plus we live where there's cattle everywhere, you know, and you know people that run cattle and have cattle, and you can generally count on them to be able to barter or buy meat from. So, you know, we, we still have a lot of resources here, but uh, it's different. Like you were saying, it's different. It's just a different way of doing things, you know. Um, and the winters here are not super harsh. We get snow. We get down into the minus 20s, 
for a little bit. It's not like way up north where it'll be at minus 20 for months. Wow. Up there. It might pile up snow, but you still have rabbits running around. And um, a couple years ago, we had we had a rabbit blight. I mean, you couldn't kill enough rabbits to put a dent in their population. <laughs> and this year, we don't have any rabbit blight. So, you know, you, well, you have a few. You still have rabbits, but they're harder to find. But uh, you know, it just. You, you live in a different area, which I love the high desert. This is where I grew up. This is home. So, um, yeah, you know, and you grew up out there, you know, going to the coast. I lived there. I loved going to the coast. I miss going crabbing, you know, and going after, you know, going fishing out on the coast and crabbing and uh, digging mussels out of the, uh, off the uh, a clam oh, there's a lot of food just laying around in Oregon 